Good afternoon from some beautiful undisclosed location along the Colorado River here in Arizona. If you haven't watched us before, we are Ben and Rebecca of His and Hers Vlogs. And for the last year, we've been living in Denny, the expedition vehicle you see behind us. Before we share with you what we're going to do for a video today, I do want to do the obligatory plug for our website, www.hisandhershub.com. We've got courses, ebooks, magazines, newsletters. You can watch our videos there. The list goes on. Check it out. Today, though, <laughs> we are going to do a video about the dirtiest secrets of having a cassette toilet. And if you're wondering, like, what is a cassette toilet? It's a pretty nifty little device. I like it. In some ways, it's kind of... Uh, a very fancy porta potty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it molds right in to a wet bath, would probably be the most common, common location. And the cassette of the cassette toilet part is really cool because you can just pull a cassette right out and take it and go dump the materials inside. So cassette toilets come in many shapes, sizes, and styles. Uh, some have electric water pumps. Ours, you have a knob, so there's no electricity. Some hold their own water for cleaning. Others draw water from your onboard water tank storage. Uh, we do use ours uh, for number one and number two. I know some people uh, just do one or the other or both, but if we're gonna be giving you a testimonial, we need to let you know how much we use it. Well, let's start out with the things we like about this cassette toilet. Number one, it is very simple, both to use and to dump. Secondly, it does not require electricity. And for us, we like that because electricity is a commodity when you're out on the road. Well, it's always a good idea to put on some nitrile or latex gloves, but I'm gonna talk about the fresh water aspect of this toilet. This is where you fill it up. It simply unscrews and amazingly enough, it actually accepts water really, really fast. So you're not just standing here for 20 minutes. I'm not gonna do it right now uh, because I don't need to winterize it. But before we left Alaska, there was a point in time where I had to drain the water out of it. And it was so simple. I literally unhooked it from here, pulled this off, dropped it down, and all the water drained out. Easy. And speaking of winter, we just traversed the Alaska Highway in like minus 18 conditions. And granted, the box is heated while we were driving, but we did not have any issues with aspects of this freezing up. And it was bitterly cold. While driving, minus 25. While camped, minus 18. And that's Fahrenheit. All right, well, I think we're done in here. One thing Ben forgot to mention, that fresh water lasts for the two of us about two weeks, so you don't have to fill it up very often. The other thing I really like about this toilet is that you can use any kind of toilet paper you want. So I'm a Charmin girl, was never a fan of the Scott toilet paper when we had the RV, so this is a nice change for us. So the final thought for things that we really like about the cassette toilet is, and we have not had to do this one yet ourselves, but you theoretically could dig a hole out in the wild and dump it and then refill in the hole, which I think is a lot better than what somebody here at this uh, campsite did before us. Moving inside the camper, let's talk about the things we don't like about the cassette toilet. First off, in warmer climates, the underside of our lid condensates. Really pleasant when you sit down. We don't really like cleaning the inside of the cassette toilet very much. The outside is surprisingly easy because it's in a wet bath and you just kind of hose it all off. But the inside is problematic because there's a little squirter, there's little nooks and little crannies that just get dirty. But the worst part, and we are not alone in this one, skid marks. They happen. They're not easy to clean off. You know, in this environment, you know, a home has a regular traditional toilet brush. You don't have room for that because it's going to be spilling. It's nasty. And we have found, and we were shocked when some other traveling friends of ours said they do the same thing, but you just kind of got to wad up a chunk of toilet paper and just kind of stick it in there and work it around. around. Yeah. Not all that pleasant, but I still like the cassette toilet. My number one biggest beef with this toilet is that me being a male, my junk 
touches the bowl. But you're here doing your business and you know, I'm a full size man and all that, but you kind of got to tuck it in and it touches. Just not all that pleasant. As we've mentioned before, dumping the cassette toilet is pretty easy to do. It's not hard to find a place to do it because you don't need a traditional dump station. And in fact, we actually prefer not to use a dump station because hitting a hole about this size from way up high, very hard to do, tends to be messy unless you can wash it away. Our preference is to use vault toilets or porta potties. And apparently in Europe, they're actually set up for dump stations for these cassette toilets. So someday we look forward to checking that out. So like Beck said, we prefer outhouses or vault toilets, but the characteristics of those are what we like. The long drop. And what that does is that eliminates splashes. That segues into do not go into somebody's house and dump this toilet. It really truly is not polite. There's splashes, it's messy. There's better places to do it than like a residential bathroom. Let's talk the logistics about dumping and maintaining this cassette toilet. First off, we tend to recycle our gray water whenever we're dumping to rinse out the tank. And since this is an adventure vehicle, we don't have a traditional gray tank. We have a tank up here attached to this hose and we're able to just quickly turn it on. That lends itself to dumping out the toilet, the cassette, then filling it with a little bit of water, slushing it around, making sure everything gets out, redumping it and putting it away. Nice feature. We've tried a couple of different things to keep the toilet smelling fresh, including vinegar, which really didn't work all that well. And we have gone back to using the same treatment that we used in our RV toilet. We call it the orange stuff, and it smells really good and keeps everything fresh between changes. So now that the cassette has been dumped, the orange stuff is in, everything's smelling all fresh and clean, how long does it take for us to fill it back up? Well, if it's the two of us, and it is the sole toilet that we are using three days. Um, that gets infinitely longer if I can kind of step outside and uh, water the bushes and stuff of that nature, or if you are using public facilities. As we close this video out, we're gonna give you a few last minute tips to make your cassette toilet experience a little more pleasurable. Starting with, always keep a stash of nitrile gloves. This tip helps keep odors down when you're in the process of using the cassette toilet. But drop the contents into the bowl of the toilet and then drop them into the cassette. You can use water, obviously water helps, but don't let that linger. It just adds to the smell. Another tip for dumping the cassette toilet, when you're actually ready to take it to a place to dump it, go ahead and open and close that gate again that Ben just showed you. Make sure that there are no remnants that are going to be left on the top of the cassette when you pull it out of its housing. Just a little messiness. This tip is in regards to the nature of the contents inside the cassette toilet. When you are at a uh, campsite for several days, it's not sloshing around. So the solids kind of remain solids for a while and the paper doesn't get all broken up. But the minute you drive around and it's sloshing, it just becomes a very soupy, ugly mess. But that soupy, ugly mess is nice when you are dumping the cassette because it minimizes splashes. So just a little poo for thought. A really important factor to having a pleasant experience in a bathroom without a door is a max fan. You gotta make sure that you put it on in the right direction though. So you want it to be blowing air into your rig, open the window in your bathroom and the odors will blow out. A couple more tips in regards to dumping the cassette. Uh, it's always best to dump it sooner rather than later. If it gets too full, it gets really messy guys. Enough said. Um, in regards to a full cassette, well, did you know you can have two? If your rig is big enough, they can be made so there's an extra compartment right there for a spare cassette, which doubles your time. All right, thank you so much for watching our dirty secrets of cassette toilets. Uh, hit that subscribe button, head over to hisandhershub.com for more engagement. But Beck has one final lesson about the cassette toilet that was learned the hard way. Yeah. Don't hit the vent button unless you know what it will do and you're timed right. <laughs>
I'd say take the cap off next. Do you think I should vent? Um, does it say vent? No, it doesn't say anything. This? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch that. There's an arrow there. You gotta vent somehow to well, get the air Maybe push out. that button. Push that button. Oh! <laughs> I did 